No way. Oh, I don't put it. Oh, wow. Yes, it's 1016. It's time for our weekly segment called I Want to Know, the segment where I surprise my cohorts, co-hosts here with a leading expert to answer one of their burning questions. And the best part is the guest sticks around to chat with us. They don't know who it is. This week we're answering one of Ben's questions. Okay, okay so ben, I got my secret paper here. Ben did ask, why are religions constantly at odds when their core beliefs are so Similar. Yeah. All right, so here are your clues. All right, you ready for this? When Pope Benedict XVI resigned, many speculated that he was a dark horse candidate to become the next pontiff. He Arnold studied Lord. for a doctorate in American church history at the Catholic University of America. He's originally from Milwaukee and loves beer. He's Ryan also Arnold. a huge yeah. New York Met fan. Please welcome his eminence, Cardinal Timothy <laughs> Dolan. Yay! Yay! I knew it. Yay. Good. Good clues, Dan, except I'm from St. Louis. Oh, oh. I feel well, so that. He was literally like threw us off. Didn't yeah. get it. Now, yeah. I was in Milwaukee. I was Archbishop of Milwaukee. That's right. I had the honor of coming here to New York, so you were kind of half right. Thank you, but Cardinal. I grew up in St. Louis, and the beer's good there, too. <laughs> <laughs> Cardinal, appreciate you coming on this morning and making the time. So Ben's question is actually a very interesting one, right? So Ben, why were you wondering this? Thank you, Dan. That was so nice. For yeah. a guy who's always half right, I appreciate that so much. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, because I, I've, I've dealt with it my entire life. If, you know, if I, if I was, there was times where I had crushes on girls, but if I didn't believe this certain person was my God, then we couldn't be together. And I was like, why would that make a difference? Why, why would that get in the way of love? And I always wondered why. And when all these religions, the center of it is just be good to each other, be kind, watch out for one another, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. Ben, that is a good question. And congratulations, because you're in pretty good company. You know who asks that question a lot? Oprah. Pope, Pope Francis. Oh, okay. <laughs> Pope Francis, okay. Who, who, by the way, Dan, did win the conclave, not me, okay? He, he was not, he was not I, I, I lost. Better luck next time. But Ben, he asks it a lot, too. He, and he kind of when he cringes when he asks it because he says, you know, religion should be a source of, of unity right. and reconciliation and love and peace. And he said, so often today we see the caricature of religion as almost being a, a cause of fraction and mm -hmm. a cause of violence. And he, of course, is dead set against that as he calls us back to the original root of uh, religion. And if you think about it, every religion believes that there, that, uh, there is a God we are he's our creator and father we are his children meaning we're brothers and sisters meaning why in the world can't we get along right. okay so uh, as and dan i don't our ben i don't mind telling you not only is pope francis asked that question i sometimes think god himself does when mm. he says this isn't quite what i intended okay mm. however let's take a let's take a closer look at the question you were right all religion seems to be united on those basic tenets that there is a god He's our creator. Uh, we, we trust in his providence, and he asks us to love and honor and respect one another, the dignity of the human person, the sacredness of all human life. What happens, though, very often is that religion can get caught because, because people are so passionate about it. Mm -hmm. It can be misused, yeah. as with all passions. Sometimes the passion of food can be misused. Right. Mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad the picture is only from my neck up. <laughs> sometimes the, sometimes the, the passion of love can be misused, and sometimes it can turn into division and and even hate. Sometimes the passion for family can be misused when we when we begin to circle the yeah. wagons and protect our own at, at the cost of everybody else. And very often religion is that way because people are so passionate about it because it's been part of their upbringing from the earliest days, they can kind of get protective and defensive mm. about it. And sometimes that leads to, to misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we have to remember, Ben, that religion is also often tied into ethnic identity, yeah. mm -hmm. all right? Mm -hmm. Ethnic identity. I'm thinking historically, for instance, remember of the conflict in Northern Ireland between Protestants mm -hmm. and Catholics. Yeah, right. Uh, the experts would tell us that really wasn't a religious division. It was more ethnic. Mm -hmm. um, and there are many ethnic groups. Look at what's going on in Armenia and, uh, and, and their neighbor. I forget the name of it. You know, you cover the news. Yeah. Those are ethnic rivalries. 
Um, in other words, the, 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 because they often inherited their faith in their blood, it, it sort of becomes part of the protection of turf yeah. and family and tribe and culture. Uh, there's, only, there's only two ways that we get religion. One is that we're born into it, which is most of the time that would apply to Catholics and Jews. Um, or we're converted. We join it later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody kind of gives us such a good example or such a, code and ex a cogent explanation of the faith that we freely join. But when you're raised in a religion, when you're born into it, when it's part of your DNA, that's kind of a good thing is yeah. because it's so interior, but it can also be it can also have a toxic side to it. Well, Cardinal, in that we in that we begin to see kind of a tribal ethnic right. defense. There. Right. Am I making sense? Yeah. You are making sense. Yeah. If only you could string two sentences together. I know. I, I, you know, you were born, <laughs> so born with the gift of gab. Yeah. No, ben, does that help you out? Yeah, definitely. I it's just wish there was a way man. for the heads of these religions yeah. to come together and say, okay, here's the deal. Stop. Yeah. This mm -hmm. is what we want. This is what we're trying to, to accomplish. Yeah. Everybody just kind of work together now. And Car yeah. Car and Ben... Ben, that is kind of working. I mean, um, let me brag about Pope Francis. You know, he's brought he's brought Islam together. He's had a number of meetings in Assisi where he asks all the representatives of world religions. And in general, even though religious tensions seem to make the headlines, I think we all know, all you have to do is look at the city of New York. What, uh, once a month, I meet with the religious yeah. leaders mm -hmm. yeah. in a tremendously productive, creative, friendly meeting. And we're all kind of on the same page, and we want to be on the side of uh, Cardinal. of unity and reconciliation. Cardinal, we're almost out of time here, and I do want to get to two specific things. One being um, what's going on with schools here in New York City. While we have you, I might as well talk about this. Catholic schools and coronavirus. We see what's happening with the numbers. We see what's happening in the public school system. What is your thoughts on keeping schools open in the Catholic area? We're committed to it, Dan. Uh, first of all, the safety and health of our kids would be our priority. You might remember that way back in March, we made the opposite decision and we closed our Catholic schools before the public schools right. did because we were just scared. We had to admit, uh-oh, we don't know if we can protect them properly. Now we've learned how to be as safe and cautionary as possible. And we've also listened to the experts who say, there's no place safer than our kids mm -hmm. to be in school. So we are committed uh, to stay in open. But if it you reaches that active. orange level, you have to close down, right? If the state says, if, okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if the law said you got to close, I'm afraid we yeah. might be uh, forced into such a decision because we never want to place our kids in jeopardy. But right now, we want to stay. And our parents, Good. our teachers, our principals, the community is backing us up, thank God. And lastly, Cardinal, we're almost out of time here, so I'm going to ask you to keep this answer brief. But I think it's so important as we approach a Thanksgiving holiday, the Christmas holiday, I have asked you this a number of times, and I still struggle with the answer here. When you look at what's happening around us in the world and coronavirus and everything else, many people start to question their faith. And they say, how can this be going on? How can so many lives be lost? How can everything can continue? Why would God let this happen? And I, yeah. I struggle with that answer. You're not alone, Dan. Sometimes I do too. I'm not afraid to admit. <laughs> Here's one, by the way, I'm fine. I got tested this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Every time you cough. Let the cough bother you. I'll be able to eat turkey and dress you more. <laughs> I don't worry. But Dan, let's think of the other side. We also see tremendous good. When you see the unity of our community, when you see the heroic uh, uh, witness of healthcare workers and first responders and even family and people in the neighborhood, you're gonna say, you know what? Yep, there's a lot of evil, there's a lot of question mm. marks, but there's also a big fat exclamation point replacing that question mark when we just see the tremendous good and love and concern and solidarity in the in the community. And I that's part of my religion yeah. is yeah. that good and evil sort of have to coexist. Mm -hmm. Jesus told that great parable about the weeds and the wheat, and they mm -hmm. kind of grow together. Understood. And we know ultimately good and life and truth are, are going to conquer. But in the meantime, there's a battle going on. Yeah. But, so even when we see evil seeming to triumph, we know that good is there as well. Cardinal and that's Dolan. where the Lord comes in. Love Cardinal it. Dolan, thank you so much for your time this morning. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dan. Dan, did I do okay? Last time Perfect. I was on, Dan Dan coached me and said, use your arms and hands. Is that what he said? Yes. yes. Like yes. the Italians oh. do. Coaches. I just, just, just one question. Uh, when is the mass for Steve Cohen and the Mets? Uh, <laughs> we...
We're doing a novena to St. Jude, the <laughs> fantastic. patron saint of impossible causes. Thank right. you. Thank you very much. Cardinal, very you did it's a pleasure. Thank you were fantastic this week. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving to you. you. You're welcome Stay back safe. anytime. And when, when right. we can fly once again, you know, you, got, you and I got to eat pasta in, in Rome. Hey, I beat Dan Brown anytime, all right? There you go! <laughs> all right, Cardinal Dolan, thank you so much. Take care, all right? Stay safe to you, everybody. If you have a burning question, send me an email. I want to know at pixelevin.com, and we can have a surprise guest on behalf of whatever your question may be. So there's the there email address, so many everybody. questions for the Cardinal, and just know. not enough time. He did a whole time. show. He, did a whole, he was the whole fantastic, show with him. Yeah. yeah. He really was. That was a great question, Ben. Thank you. Because people really do ask that all the time, you know?